Hi, I'm an ambient musician who records under the name Anesti. Today I'm going to build an ambient patch from scratch using my Eurorack modular system. Thanks to the magic of video editing, you're hearing the end product of today's patching efforts. But I'm going to rewind the recording to the beginning and show you how I got here. One reason I want to make this kind of video is that when I originally got into Eurorack modular systems, I found the kinds of patch from scratch videos I was watching on YouTube extremely helpful for me. Um, it helped me understand what people were doing, gave me insights into the patching process, and quickly helped me learn which modules I wanted and which ones I could probably live without. So part of this video is an effort to kind of pay it forward. Please use the comments to let me know if you have any thoughts or questions, or <laughs> if you see better ways to patch things. I'm open to constructive criticism too. Enjoy. Okay, so let's begin patching. Now, what I'm gonna use as my main sound source today is the new Make Noise XPO. There's no reason in particular I'm using that other than I just recently got the module, so I'm having a lot of fun playing with it. Um, typically, I would begin using rings, which is one of my favorite things in the world, probably the reason I got into Modula in the first place. Um, but we're gonna stick with the XPO today just as a way to sort of kind of narrow our scope. Um, what I'm going to do is, because I really love sine waves, is I'm going to begin patching the sine wave output of the XPO into my VCA, which I'm going to use as an audio mixer here. Now, if I were to only stick with the sine wave, we would have something relatively um, basic that would seem kind of underpowered for what the XPO is capable of. So let's just blend in a few extra sounds too. Let's add in, how about a triangle wave too? So I'll add that into the second input of my mixer. And um, I don't know, let's see what that sounds like to begin with. So both of these sounds are running into the VCA right now. And I'll just take, I'll, I'm using it kind of as a mixer. So this IntelliGel Quad VCA will sum all those auto signals basically. Let me put it into the mixer. There we go. There's kind of what that sounds like. Um, I kind of, I like the way that sounds. I'm going to bring down the triangle wave just a little bit because I, I like the sine wave. I love that pure tone, but I just want to throw in a few extra harmonics there, but I don't want it to be too buzzy. Um, let's see, just for fun, because we have the options. Let's throw in a little bit of saw too. Okay, that's definitely buzzy. We might be able to control that a little bit. I'm gonna keep it in the mix there. Okay, now one thing to notice is, well, if you're new to modular, this always seems to catch, catch people by surprise, but notice that it's just a droning. It's just gonna on and on and on and on. So I'm gonna unplug that for now because that's really annoying. Um, what we want to do is control the envelope. In other words, we want to control the sound moving up or fading away, so it's not just constantly on, uh, onslaughting. So to do that, what we're going to do is send an envelope to the VCA, and that envelope is going to basically turn those knobs up versus bring the volume back down. So I'm going to use Ornament and Crime as my envelope generator. Basically, what this module does is it will generate a control voltage that kind of originally goes up and then goes down, starts at zero, goes up, comes back down to zero, attack and decay. And we're going to have that feeding into, you're going to use that as control voltage input to control the different levels of the volume, the relative volume of these different sound sources. And then that will go out into our mixer. So let me go ahead and plug it back in. We don't hear anything because there is no envelope being sent from the ornament of crime. We do need to trigger one. So to do that, I'm going to plug in as an input and gate output from my Oxy1 sequencer. So now if I just hit a button, we should hear a corresponding note. You can see on the ornament and crime that whenever I press the button, the envelope goes up and gradually decays. Essentially what it's doing is it's sending that signal to the VCA to control the envelope with those knobs, basically. Let me turn on the volume of the sign. Okay, that sounds pretty good. All right, so 
we have a working system here. We don't notice that no matter what key I press on the Oxy-1, um, we always get the same note. That's because I don't have control voltage going in there to control the pitch just now. So this particular module is called the OxyPipe. It basically serves as a MIDI to CV interface for the Oxy-1. So I have the gate signal going out from the Oxy to control the envelope. And then we're going to have CV coming out to control the pitch. So that is going to go into the volt per octave input of the XPO. So now I can play different notes. OK, so now we have pitch and gate information going to the XPO. What we want to do now is sculpt our sound a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is instead of having the output going directly to the uh, mixer, I'm going to instead send that output into the QPOS filter. So I'm going to use a shorter cable for this. So I'm going to send this output just as a mono input to the QPOS. And then for the QPOS, what I'm going to do is connect that back to our mixer here. So what this will allow us to do is kind of filter out certain sounds to be more accepting of certain frequencies or less accepting of them. And right now I'm just kind of looking for a sweet spot that gives me a sound I like. That sounds nice. And are we filtering out too much of the triangle for the saw? No, not too much. Okay, that could work. Okay, so now we have something we can work with. Um, we have the sounds, again, being generated by the XPO. They're going into the VCA where they're getting mixed or blended together. That sum signal is essentially going into the QPOS. So we're just kind of passing running it through a low-pass filter, cutting out some of the higher frequencies. And right now, we're not doing it in a very dynamic way. I might change that later, but we can always control that with CV to get a little bit of extra movement in there. But I'll just leave it as it is for now. Okay, so now we have a sound. It sounds okay. It's not something I'm in love with, but I don't want to putz around with it too much for the purposes of making the video. But what we need now is a melody. Now, melody's tricky. It's one of those things where I think in the modular world, we tend to allow the melodies to emerge through randomness exclusively. So for example, I have this beautiful module called Marbles, where I can like plug the CV coming out of Marbles, have the gate, oops, that cable's too small. Too short, I mean. Having the trigs coming from marbles. And marbles is set to generate um, control voltages that are quantized to a specific scale. So that's nice, but we can control the scale. And with marbles, there's a few other things you control too. But ultimately, the melody is left to chance which means that every once in a while you get something that's amazing. Like I've had marbles come up with things that have just mesmerized me before, but most of the time it's completely unnoteworthy and that's fine too. One of the reasons I wanted to get the Oxy sequencer is I wanted just a little bit more control over my melodies. The reason that matters for me is that I think a lot of, uh, a lot of ambient music needs a little bit more melody. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is just kind of putz around, play with ideas, and you know, I'll probably speed up the video so you don't have to watch me playing around with this. Okay, so I've been playing around for a bit and I feel like I have a melody that I like fairly well. Um, it's not terribly special. It's not necessarily captivating in any unique way. And as you can hear right now, it's just really, really slow. Um, you'll see why I have such a slow playing mel melodic structure here a little bit later on, because once we start adding effects and uh, different kinds of granular processes, we want a little bit of empty space that can be filled by some of those effects. Okay, 
That sounds a little bit too high up there. Let's, I'm going to change the scale here. Go down an octave. Okay. All right. So now that we have something that works, what we need to begin to do is process that in more interesting ways. So I typically think of the song making process for the nasty patches starting with a sound that I think is kind of interesting. So we did that with the XPO and the Q pass, coming up with some sort of melodic outline that will be interesting to work with. But then we need to channel those sounds through different pathways to create effects and layers that sort of make it a more interesting ambient piece. Now, we're going to do that through three different modules. I'm going to focus on the Qubit Nautilus, which is a delay module that I just got last week. Um, the Instru Arbar, which is a module I've had for, basically, it's kind of what got me into this world. Um, it's super cool, so I'll walk you through that a little bit. Then finally, the Qubit Nebulae, which is absolutely essential to anything that is a, can be called an NSD patch. So let's begin with the Nautilus first. Okay, so remember that right now we just have the raw audio going out into the mixer with no further processing. What I'm gonna do is take advantage of the fact that QPOS is a stereo filter and I'm gonna send the left channel into the left channel input for the Nautilus and send the right channel output to the right channel input of the Nautilus. And then let me take those outs and go directly into our mixer. Okay. By the way, I'm not going directly into the mixer. I lied. I'm going into a reverb module that isn't on right now. I have it set to the dry signal and then into the filter. Okay, so you can now hear that the space is already being filled. We had left that melody relatively unstructured, or not unstructured, but light. And now we have it going through the Nautilus. The Nautilus I have configured to what the manual calls the shimmer-like um, configuration where Basically, the delays are being pitched up a little bit, so it kind of creates this nice little shimmery effect for the, the sounds. Sounds pretty good. Okay, so notice that that gives it a whole new layer, a whole new sense of depth. What I'm going to do is pass that now into the reverb. I use the Happy Nerding FX as my FX8 as my main reverb. I actually have two of them. That's partly because some channels of sound I just want to be lightly reverbed, <laughs> and other channels of sound I want to be bathed in reverb. Um, so I have two reverbs for that purpose. They don't take up too much HP though, so no big deal, right? Anyhow, notice that this immediately sounds completely different. Just kind of pausing to listen there. Ironically, I think the melody stands out more now, partly because it's these little particles of sound are kind of bouncing around it and sort of supporting the main weight of it. So that that sounds pretty nice. Let me see what happens if I do a little more. Ah, too much. I think I'll turn down the reverb time a little bit and put the mix closer to 50-50. Okay, that sounds pretty good to me. Notice that we haven't done too much work yet, and we're in a space that feels really interesting, right? Um, curious, what would happen if we... Okay, I'm going to filter it out just a little bit more. Okay, sounds good. All right, so the Qubit Nautilus is basically a very flexible delay, but because it has so many features, it, it can just it's capable of doing not only classic delays, but all kinds of really innovative things like the, the shimmery effect here. And I think you can even go to a, a lower, lower pitch shimmer. I think they call it D-shimmer. 
That sounds pretty cool too, huh? So here the, the echoes or the delays are pitched down an octave. I'm gonna keep that here, I kinda like that. Okay, anyhow, that is one channel of sound we're gonna play with. We're gonna talk about the Instru Arbar next. Okay, now the Arbar is probably my favorite thing in the world. Um, let me see it. I hope you can kind of see it through these patch cables here. Um, what it does is it allows you to sample up to 10 seconds of audio. It's like you're creating a 10 second tape recording of something. And then if you continue to add audio to it, you're overwriting it, not destructively, but you're kind of layering new sounds on top of it. So you can end up creating this rich audio buffer of sound that just contains loops and layers of sound that are just on top of one another. But that's part one of the Arbor that makes it cool. The second part is what makes it amazing, which is the granular engine which allows you to trigger sounds from different parts on that recording. And you can do it all relatively simultaneously. So you could have like 30 different tape heads playing off of this tape in different places and random ways at different lengths with different envelopes. And it just allows you to just totally, totally restructure a sound. So anyhow, the downside of the Arbor from my point of view is that it only has one mono input. So what I'm going to do is just split off some sound from the QPOS. Maybe I'll take this, um, I don't know, I'll take the band pass out here and I'm gonna run it into the Arbor. And by the way, just for now, I'm gonna turn down our quote unquote original audio. It's still playing, it's in the background. And I'm gonna, we're gonna to listen to it via the Arbor. Um, by the way, because the, the Arbor does have stereo outs, but I find that I have some cancellation issues with it when I use it. I don't, I think despite what the manual says, these things are in phase. Um, but because I only have that mono out and the way I have my mixer set up is for stereo here, I'm going to do one little sidestep here. I'm going to go through the nebulae, but I'm not using any of the nebulae's features here. I will explain those later though. And I'm just gonna do that to transform that mono output into a stereo signal so that my mixer doesn't get confused. Okay, so here we go. All right, so now what we're hearing is just a raw, no reverb, just the original sound again but it's being routed as a high pass, I'm sorry, band pass signal into the Arbor through the nebulae, which we don't have turned on in any meaningful way and into the mixer with no reverb. So again, it sounds raw. It sounds maybe a tad bit different just because it is band pass filtered rather than low pass filtered, but you'll recognize the raw melody for what it is. Now, what we're going to do is we're gonna record some sounds that are being played into that buffer. So I'm gonna hit this shift button to turn it on. Notice that orange light goes on and you start seeing a little recording head moving across the buffer. It's kind of like a LED simulation of what a cassette tape looks like. So I think that's really handy. So now I'm gonna go move from the dry signal all the way to the wet signal, which is the granular playback. Now we can use this scan knob to move along that playhead. And there are different parts of the playhead where we have sounds recorded now. And we can sort of play that back in a granular fashion. So we're basically just taking little snippets of different playheads, adding them onto the, the scan here and triggering those. And notice that this sounds completely different from what we started with. It's still the same tones, but the way we're interacting with them is completely unique and different. Now, it can be fun to sort of scan this playhead manually. What I like to do is automate that process using control voltage. So there's a CV input for the scan knob. I basically just run that through a slow LFO, thanks to the 
ought. So now you can see that little the playhead space moving up and down. Okay. That's kind of cute. It's like a little music box or something. I'm going to make the grains less frequent. We can also like change the length of a grain that's played. So right now I have it set to, it's probably about a second or so, but you can kind of go into micro sound territory by making those things really brief. <laughs> that sounds kind of fun, huh? Okay. Okay, now on its own, that's really cool. Um, but what we want to do is take advantage of the fact that we can record to the buffer. So I'm going to automate that process too. Basically, I, I'm going to use a control voltage from Pam's new workout, just a gate, to turn on that playhead every once in a while. Or not the playhead, the record head. So, sorry, I'm trying to arrange these so you can still see things. So every once in a while, Pam's will send a gate to turn on this playhead and it will record for about 10 seconds and then it will turn off again. So I'm just waiting for that to happen so we can see it turn orange. Come on, Pam's, do it. I'm waiting. Oh man, I just gotta restart Pam's. There we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm very patient today. Um, okay, so the, the head is on and it's recording new audio over top or sort of in addition to the, the audio that's already there. So it'll gradually decay over time. And there it goes again. Okay. Now, this is fun and everything, but this really benefits from a little bit of reverb. So remember I said the output is being routed through the nebula, which is going into my mixer, which is in turn one of my mixers. And then in turn is going into the FX, FX8 XL for a little bit of reverb. So let me turn that on because I think what you'll see is adding a little reverb to this granular playback completely, completely changes the atmosphere. Oh, yeah, see that? We're not done, but I feel like we could stop right there and just let that play for hours. That sounds great. Now, what I want to do is tell you a little bit about how I bring the nebulae into this process. Now, the nebulae is also a granular engine, or a granular synthesizer, um, but I don't actually use it for that purpose. Um, what I like about it is that it allows you to record audio and to basically manipulate the pitch of that audio and the playback speed independently of one another. That's sometimes referred to as elastic audio, but if you think about a traditional tape-based um, recording, if you were to slow down the tape, you'd be slowing down the speed and lowering the pitch at the same time. That's the way the Strymon Magneto works, for example. Um, but what Qubit has done is use some fast Fourier transform style ideas and algorithms to sort of squeeze out the independence of these two channels of, of sound so that you can vary the pitch and the speed independently of one another. And I really value that feature because it allows me to add a new layer to the sound. I can add something that is more, more bass heavy or maybe a little bit more shimmery depending on the mood I'm in. Anyhow, we're not hearing anything from the nebulae right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this record button, and what the nebulae will do is begin to record the audio that we're hearing from the R bar. And it turns out the nebulae can record anything up to five minutes long, I believe, but don't worry, I'm not going to record, sit here for five minutes and record sounds. That's probably enough just to load something to the buffer. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this blend knob, which is kind of like a dry wet knob, and I'm going to turn it all the way counterclockwise. Now you didn't hear anything different when I did that, but now we are fully listening to the audio buffer exclusively. We're not listening to the sounds coming from the R bar. Now 
This allows me to show you how the pitch and timing stuff works independently. So if I were to, let's say, turn the pitch up, you can now hear that we are playing this back at higher frequencies, or we could lower the frequencies. Sounds like alien birds, right? So you can kind of get into some dark territories here. Okay. Anyhow, I'm gonna, I, if I just hit the encoder, it resets it to the original pitch. But let me show you the speed or the timing. So we're gonna time stretch this now. I'm gonna slow down everything to a glacial pace. Let me see how slow I can go. Okay, that is pretty slow right there. It's so slow that we're stopped in a space where you can't hear anything. Okay, here comes the sound. Now, this sounds a little, I don't know what the word for it is, artificial? I mean, I guess it's all synthesized, so I'm not sure what the difference between organic and artificial here is, but it sounds very bit crushed because it's, a little bit of audio information being stretched out and there's no quote unquote real information there to fill the gaps. So sometimes, it, so sometimes when I'm slowing things down like that, I'll compensate by adding a lot of reverb. So the, the lo-fi moments kind of get blurred together. So let's, let me speed it up just so we hear a sound coming. Okay, so. That already sounds pretty cool, huh? And if we were to pitch that down an octave, we would get a completely different layer. Ooh, I like the way that sounds. It's kind of like a weird combination of <laughs> Blade Runner style, futuristic, but with some degree of majesty. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I'm going to keep it like that. I like that. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Now, what's cool about the nebulae is that we can actually blend that nebulae manipulated vocoder style sound with the signal that we were originally capturing from the R bar. So if I use this blend knob, again, it's kind of like a dry, wet thing. We can get in some of the R bar sounds and some of the time stretched nebulae. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. I'm just gonna let that sit there for a moment. Okay, so that sounds pretty cool. Now, you might recall that I completely turned off the Nautilus in some ways, or at least lowered the, the volume here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fade that back in so that what we're gonna be hearing is a mix of the Nautilus style shimmer, the Arbor granular playback, and the Nebulae's time stretch sounds. I feel like the uh, the Nautilus needs a little bit more reverb because everything feels so spacey here. So I'm going to turn up that a little bit. And just as a reminder, here's the Qubit Nautilus all by itself. And here we go, fading in the Arbar the nebulae. I like that.
Okay, I feel like we could end here, but I just want to show you one more module that I think is really cool, the Panharmonium. Um, the Panharmonium is basically, it's called the Mutating Spectral Resynthesizer. Um, what it, the way I think of it is, it tries to take an incoming audio stream and applies a fast Fourier transform to it so that you can kind of reproduce the sound as a function of up to 33 different oscillators. Um, so at least in basic sound theory, just about any audio wave can be decomposed into a, a series of, of fundamental sine waves. And it's by adding those together that you can kind of reproduce the sound. Not always perfectly, but um, it's, it can be a very close approximation. Um, the challenge is that audio waves are changing in real time, so the penharmonium or any other FFT style process has to be doing that um, really, really quickly. Um, so what I like to do with the penharmonium is take some of my audio and try to resynthesize it into another waveform, such as, like I said before, I'm a sucker for sine waves. Um, but the nice thing about the prime harmonium is you can also change the pitch of that. So that also introduces some ways to sort of create different layers within the frequency spectrum for the sounds that we're working with. Now, what I'm going to do somewhat spontaneously here, no idea if this is going to make any sense, is I'm going to send the high pass signal into the panharmonium. And I'm not going to go fancy and do any stereo stuff here. And let me send the output to my happy nerding three times in my A mixer, which I love. Ooh, did you hear the crackle? Okay, let me turn down that sound. It's a little bit too loud to start. Okay, and I'm going to go stereo here. Okay, let me try to rearrange these nut chords. Okay. All right, so I'm going into the same mixer that contains the reverb for the nebulae. Um, so just a reminder, we have that set pretty high. It's a fairly wet signal. So for now, what I'm going to do is turn down the nebulae. I'm also going to turn down our original Nautilus. So all we're going to have for now is the panharmonium. We'll work with that independently for now. Now, it is receiving its signal from the QPAS. So remember, that's our original melody. This is a high pass signal, so it's missing the low end. Um, so it's we're back in our original space. Now, I have this set to dry, but as soon as I begin to shift it to wet, we start to mix in the resynthesized version of that signal. So now it's taking three sine waves and trying to resynthesize that, and of course, passing it through some reverb. That already sounds kind of interesting, but a little less blur, so it's more discreet. I feel like that's a little too loud. Turn it down a bit. Let me go up an octave. It's kind of cool. It's still too loud. Add a few more oscillators. Let's see what it sounds like if we go down a couple octaves. I feel like we don't... Oftentimes I might go down with this, but I don't feel like we need to since we used the D shimmer and kind of slowed things down. So let me go up an octave. Turn on the feedback. And we can also change the speed at which it samples or applies that transform. So now it's kind of slow. It's going to sound more sample and holdy. Mm, I don't like that. Let me go back to something that's more continuous. Okay. Anyhow, let's experiment with that and feed it into every. Let's fade everything else back in and see what it seems like. Oh, 
don't really feel like a pandemonium is bringing anything special here. I'm going to change the waveform to something more triangle-like, see if that matters. Feels like it's giving it something rich to play with. Let me go down octaves. Mm, let's go more pulse wave square. Yeah, in this case, I don't think this is adding much. Let me, instead of taking the high pass in out of here, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna take some greens out of the R bar instead. Saw. Okay, I'm gonna keep that volume fairly low. It's just gonna be some little additional nuance in there. works pretty well. Let's just sit here and bathe in it for a bit. I'm just going to add a little bit of random CV to the filter cutoff on the coupons. 